So I might have taken 21 races, but we got there. Brazil was Mercedes weekend. That was quite a sweet one too, I would have thought. Yeah, no, definitely. It's 21, the last race was 21 races, right? Yeah. Because in my book, I, I feel like I got lost. I didn't know if it was like 20th or the 21st. We ditched Russia, so just, oh, yeah, uh, just exactly. 22 this year. Okay, yeah. Just, just the 22. Yeah, it's still very long. It's crazy to think the next year we have two more, but yeah, but, um, Oh man, I saw a video of my team on on uh, Monday, or I think it was on the Tuesday after we got to Dubai from that quite long flight. Just seeing everyone in the team top celebrating all together was quite an emotional yeah. thing to see, just knowing how hard everyone has worked through the year, how difficult it would have been for them, just knowing how hard they worked last winter and then they, it didn't turn out the way that they had um, not rewarded for all the hard work that they put in necessarily. Mm. and. Um, yeah, to come through a whole season just not giving up, just continuing to keep the faith, keep the hopes high, and 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 get a one-two was a very proud moment for me and, and for the whole team. It's got to be said as well, it's a hell of a way for George to win his maiden F1 victory. It was a Absolutely. commanding performance from your young teammate. Yeah, he did an amazing job. Um, he has done generally just through the whole year. He's done a fantastic job. Um, very consistent. Um, there's been no problems with us in, in terms of our work, uh, working mm. relationship. And um, yeah, just really proud of him. I think he, he drove ex exceptionally well. I'm not surprised to hear you say that at all. I know you're a magnanimous man, but there must be a part of you that's thinking, don't get used to it, Georgie boy. Don't get used to it. <laughs> I mean, no, I wouldn't. Have. I wouldn't say it like that necessarily. <laughs> well, you'd say it a lot cooler. I, yeah, I know, I know. Like, yeah, there'll be like some swear words in it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, no, I, you know what? I just, I just focus. I don't, I don't know. I just focus. It's more kind of talking to myself about my performance, like how I can do better. Like, um, I know I do feel that. Um, when, you know, when we uh, we have progress with the car, we've got to a better place. I'm much happier in the car this latter part of the season, um, and I know next year hopefully we'll be in an even better uh, mm. position. I'm even doing a test on Tuesday, which I never do. This is that's, unheard that's a lot of. For me. Yeah, it really is unheard of. <laughs> is, is this you saying, okay, I want to come and do the test, or the team asking Lewis, would you mind coming to do the test? Well, they um, they always come and ask me to do the test. I always say, they, but they already say they already know what they're going to say. In yeah. the past, so they would always joke. Um, but I think this one's really more of. Um, I mean, we have less testing next year. It's getting more and more vital that the time that you do get in the car. Um, and I want to be a part of the development. I want to be a part, uh, being a part of the team's development this year more than ever has been something that I've really, uh, I really cherish and have been really grateful to have been a part of. Um, you know, helping be part of the rudder that's steering the ship yeah. uh, in some sense. Um, but yeah, and next year is going to be tougher than ever. Oh, it's going to be a tough year. Um, we'll get onto that in a moment. I just want to tick off all the boxes from Brazil. Just wanted to ask you, if you and Max hadn't come together so early on, there's a good chance that one, two might have been the other way around. You know, the old switcheroo. Did you think at the time, well, that's my race done? Yes. Yeah, it definitely was. Um, yeah, I think would have been a lot more opportunity, I think, within the two, the two pit stops that we had. And yeah, applying the pressure would have been great to have had that, that yeah. battle. I think it's not the easiest of circuits to, to overtake and you usually have to have a bigger delta in terms of pace on the other car. And I think we were very, very close. There's only a one or two tenths between, between us, uh, particularly at any given time. So, um, but still, I would have loved to have seen, I would have loved to have had the chance of just pushing, pushing, pushing yeah. and seeing if uh, an opportunity arise somewhere. But we had different wing setups. I was quicker on the straights, he was quicker through that middle section with a, with the bigger wing. So, um, uh, yeah, but it wasn't meant to be. Let's focus on that coming together for a moment. Uh, you described yourself as a target in Max's eyes. Can you expand on that for us? Mm, I don't, I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, I think um, all you have to do is listen to the words that there are certain individuals say about me, um, competitor-wise, 
um, and then also just look back at the the way those individuals behave on track around me it kind of shows you kind of that it's most often a little bit different to um, to others and I, I don't I can't explain fully exactly why but it's it's part of it's to I'm sure to do with the um, the time that I've had here the experience I've had here the success I've had here um, I would say I know because I remember when I got to the sport that target was someone else who had had the success and my goal was to challenge them and um, you almost wanted to show how tough you are you always wanted to show how good you were compared to that person etc etc so it's, just... it's been such a crazy year I mean yes there's been some phenomenal racing thank the racing gods but so much drama as well cost cap gate to name but one yeah where do you stand on that I mean, it feels like a bit of a Kardashian show <laughs> happening here. It's, it's pretty hilarious. <laughs> Some of the stuff that we I've, I've heard of in the past few days has been so entertaining. So, um, give us an example. What, do you, what have you heard? Not, I can't say. I've oh, okay. heard of some somebody's mother tech, posting something, and um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty pretty interesting stuff that's going on. I'm sure it will be in Netflix. It's going to be great. <laughs> But, um, no, I think, uh, well, we've got to continue to strive for transparency, right? And um, I think continuous, continuously work to make sure that we stay strong to the pillars, the, the, the core values of what the sport is, and um, make sure we don't veer off from those things. Um, but it's been, yeah, what a mess in, in, the, crazy. in that space. It's been very interesting to see it unfold over the last 12 months. Interesting to hear that you, much like me, when you hear about all the drama and all the silliness off the track, it makes you want to roll your eyes. It's like, I, I'm just, I just want to see some racing. Yeah. I, that's all I want. That's all I want. Yeah, at the core of what I do and what I, yeah, that's what I've got into the sport for, right? And I think that's probably what people get into the sport for. But I'm sure for some people it adds excitement seeing all that drama. But for me, I just want to see great wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing. Yeah on a fair platform and, and, um, and, you know, kind of let the best man kind of win, man or woman. We need yeah. a woman to hear at some stage soon. Yeah, hopefully. Um, you are a racer, doesn't need to be said. I find it quite interesting that so many people have voiced the opinion that um, essentially they're making a big deal of the fact that this is possibly, you got one more crack at it, but possibly going to be the first season in your Formula One career where you don't take a win. Yeah. But throughout our conversations over the years, I get the impression you don't really care about the stats and the records. No, not, not particularly, no. If, if this race wasn't to happen, or if, even if this weekend doesn't go particularly well, honestly, I'm just looking forward to seeing Monday. And I've had pretty amazing 15 years. I'm really just generally living in gratitude. Um, in 20 years' time, I'm not going to be whining about whether or not I, I won a single race in every single year, uh, I'll be thinking of the championships that Are you I was... still going to be in F1 20 years from <laughs> nah, now? No, definitely not, but no? I'll be looking back and thinking <laughs> um, just how fortunate I was to work with great people and the success we had, the, the trials and tribulations, those are the things I'll, I'll look back and I'm not, definitely not going to be whining whether or not I've won a single, uh, won one race in every season or being the youngest or all these different mm. uh, records, they really will have zero meaning to me. It's more the journey, it's more the, the times with the great people, the great friendships that I've made, and uh, the values that I've tried to stick to. I swear, be before you came, there wasn't a single... I'm sure. It's, it's always the same, sorry, man. But I think we, you definitely got that, so I can ask you another question as soon as this bug it off. Jackie? But when you are reflecting in the distant future, will you be thinking 2022 was the hardest season of my F1 career? Well, I don't remember all the other years, so because I, I just got a really bad memory. Um, so I difficult to be able to say it's the, been the hardest year. I definitely wouldn't say it's been the hardest year, no. Um, 
there's definitely been a year that's in the past that was the hardest year of my life from a from a personal place and so this year's been a breeze compared to that one so you have to like okay read my book or something <laughs> not that i'm gonna do a book um maybe you'll see it maybe i'll it'll come out maybe in my documentary maybe well okay well how about um the frustration levels this season must be off the charts. I know you don't like losing, but when you're hurting as well, I mean, mm. I can't remember the exact race, but the one where you were practically hobbling out of the cockpit due to the yeah. porpoising issue, it's painful to watch. Yeah, I, I think at the beginning of the year, it's more, f um, it's more frustration of just not being able to, like the machine, you're trying, you know what you need out of the car, you know where to put it, but it won't, it just, doesn't want to go where you want it to go and it doesn't react the way you want it to go or anything like any racing car that you've ever experienced in the past it's just like this car defies had in the, in the initial phase kind of defied all those um normal traits that you would experience through your whole racing career and um so and i think as a team we're just trying so many things we're coming every weekend we're arriving positive we're doing the work on the simulator we're doing the work uh back in the office but then when you get to track and you hit the ground and it just ugh, it's still the the mess that we had in the previous race and I would definitely say that was tough for everybody um, and then also having to just continue to say positive and say no worries we'll get there you know like um, that I think it was tough for everybody and very very challenging mentally and emotionally for, for I think for everyone in the team but I'm so proud of how everyone's carried themselves um, I've probably even surprised myself in how I was uh, navigated through it and just really tried to remember I've been with the team for so long, I've been so privileged to have had success. Um, the most important thing is not how we, how, whether or not we're winning or we're losing, or how, it's more how we carry ourselves as a team, mm. how we show up every week, day in, day out. That's been the most important thing, mm. so that's what I'm really trying to focus on. Here we are, just under a year later, back in Abu Dhabi. How are you feeling? Any PTSD? <laughs> any any anxiety? <laughs> um, I mean, I, I, it didn't feel great walking in here this uh, this morning or midday, whatever it is. Um, How did you feel? Just I don't know. Couldn't say that I necessarily wanted to be here, but um, but if if I'm really honest, like since I've been in my room, I've been getting my head down into preparation and I, I've generally been really focused in this past week of just and most days anyways this year just trying to make sure that um, it's so so important I think for everybody we get caught up in all these different things that we're experiencing and forgetting just to be living in gratitude that's something you really got to remember because there are so many people that have um, are having difficult times, there are so, or way, way worse times. There are so many people that are struggling. Uh, there are so many, it could be so, so much worse. And it's just always just remember to live, be grateful for a new day, a new chance to, to be better, a new chance to challenge yourself and, and shape the future. So that's what I'm focused on right now. So it's again, just turning whatever negative feeling I try to have, I try and take it, brush it aside and move forward. And that's, um, so it's beautiful beautiful day the weather's amazing I'm gonna be getting in the car tomorrow which I'm excited about I'm going skydiving on Wednesday amazing so awesome life is good you don't do tandem do you you go on your own if I'm right I got my own yeah I got tired of sitting on on a dude's lap <laughs> strapped to some strapped guy to lap. some guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> breathing down my neck so yeah so uh, <laughs> um, awesome. but I enjoy taking my uh, like the other day I took some friends who I like finding innocent souls that have never done it before. Oh, so you like <laughs> terrifying then, people, essentially. Yeah, just seeing their faces as I'm as I going up on the plane and just watching a couple of my friends that have never been before and how re relaxed they were. But then when they got to the door, just the, the life leave them <laughs> for a second, you know. Um, my security, uh, Lloyd, he was so relaxed the whole way up and then and then he got to the door. And he, Ma <laughs> his, his, his soul like, left his body for a second. <laughs> Um, oh, good so one. It, get it, a good kick out of those things. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Mm. Annoyingly, I'm going to take you back to last year. But in a positive way, because the outpouring of support for you after that fateful evening, it was 
unbelievable to watch, just extraordinary. And it made me think of Obi-Wan speaking to Darth Vader when he said, strike me down and I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. <laughs> and for me, it seemed like that happened with you. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it in that way. Um... Yeah, definitely a very, very unusual. Um, I was definitely not expecting the what would come after in terms of the amazing support from from the fans of the sport, but uh, particularly my fans and um, and then just the general I the general love that I had have experienced through the year, which I think is what's got me through the year, if I'm really honest, with the challenge of coming back in, wanting to fight back, but not being able to fight back with the car that we have. And then, um, but yet on the same weekend, even though you're finishing maybe sixth, fighting for your fifth, whatever it is, and the amazing support we've had through the year, bigger crowds than ever before, more, I think us as a team have experienced more love and affection from people than ever before. And I think that's been really, really beautiful to see. And I think in general that, I can't say in general, but I know some people in life struggle to accept love. And I've definitely been someone that's been uh, like that for a long, long time. And so this year was one that I was able to be a little more, like open up a little bit more and absorb it. And that's really been um, a beautiful experience. So I'm really, really grateful for, for that. Clearly you're a man who focuses on the positives, but I, I just wondered if, if it was a slightly bitter pill to swallow watching Red Bull and Max Verstappen going to another level in 2022? Um, it was definitely not easy, I think. Uh, I think it's more the, the big, ugly number one, which is as big as you could put it on the car. Uh, <laughs> no, I was kidding. Like, I'm not really phased by any of these things um, as much as they, I think some people like to think that maybe it, it, you know, they, they'll say things or do things hoping for a reaction but I really just am chill like I don't really mm. care about those things of course I would have lo loved to have been at the forefront fighting and battling with them um, but it's been an interesting journey to seeing, seeing what they've been going through and what they've uh, yeah it's been interesting um, one of the other things that I've never really sat and thought about is like when you come to these races in these seasons, like I've, you're, you're so focused on your, you arrive and you do your job. You never get to speak to the people the, on, you know, further down the grid. Um, mm. The drivers, we see each other every now and then, but there's thousands of people here who, you know, hundreds of people uh, within the teams that are, and the thousands of people in their backgrounds mm. that are working just as hard and just as committed and just going through a similar kind of rules have so much in common, yet you won't even see them too often. Right? Yeah. Um, but I really wanted, I, I felt like this real appreciation the other day for just all these other teams who are trying to do the same thing with the same intentions, trying to be better, um, fighting for something, going through difficult times as a built car that's not clearly capable of fighting at the front. Mm. And um, it's pretty cool to be a part of and, and, and to witness. So I wish that I could get down the grid. And like even, I like looking at McLaren and just, I always check where they are because that was where I started off. Yeah. And I'm always wishing them well, even though they're competitors of mine. Um, and I, there'll be days where they're, they're down and I, I, I feel sad for them, you know, because, um, because again, that's where I first did my simulation run, this first, where yeah. I drove my car for the first time. So I kind of want them to do well. So I hope they have a better year next year. If we are talking about appreciation, um, let's not forget, Sebastian Vettel leaves us at the end of this weekend. Yeah. I know you guys have had your ups and downs over the years, but you've become quite close of late, yes? You're going to miss yeah, him? Yeah, over the years. Well, this is the thing, I've been... Another plane's coming. Um... <laughs> it's so um... annoying. I think we probably... I think everyone's going to miss Seb. But I was just sitting in the press conference with him and I was thinking, he'll be back. I, I mean, I, I mean, get the Hulk, feeling he's regretting saying he's leaving. I mean, Hulkenberg's coming back, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, freaking heck, I mean... <laughs> Are you Mans Mansell's thinking about going to come, come back? come back, I've yeah. Heard I mean, I've heard. Geez, I mean, they're all going to come back, so... Yeah, we're all like, there's this whole build-up, but he'll be back. Um, in, one, in one way, shape or form. But, no, I'm really, really grateful 
I'm, I'm really grateful and really honored actually to have the relationship that I do with, with him. And in, in general, I think building with, trying slowly building with a lot of the drivers is a different relationship I feel like I have. It's growing with them, some less than others, but, um, but I'm, one I'm really, really grateful with Seb. Um, um, a man that really generally stands by his word, mm. full of integrity, um, generally just very, very kind and humble. Yeah. And full of you know, full of humility, um, but also compassion. You know, he he's one of the only drivers that stands for something. Mm. I mean, really, what other driver here uh, has really truly stood for something other than themselves? Yeah, we're and, gonna miss him. Um, and that's something to be really admired in a in a, in a human being. So, um, yeah. So he will be missed on the track, but I think. He's, he's probably one of the few drivers that I will always, I will, you know, 20 years time, 30 years time, we'll still be friends. Excellent. Final quick one. Are you going to win this weekend? Do what? Are you going to win this weekend? Yeah, your nay. Well, I'm going to put it out there. I've got to try and manifest it, right? Yeah. So I'll be working on it for sure. Best of luck. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Lewis. <laughs> so hot. <laughs> it's horrible, isn't it? Jeez.